There's one. Oh, is he running at me? He's running at me. He's running at me, Alan Senior. It feels nicer. Oh, nope, it's not. He just had, had it funky in his mouth. Well, how's it going, everybody, and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. It is a windy day today, but we're going to talk about a topic that has been highly requested here on the channel, and that is the underspin, how to use it and how to catch fish like this and that. Let's talk about it. What is happening folks? My name is Tyler Anderson and I make it my goal on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video that I make. So if you guys are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 200,000 subscribers, which is a crazy number and I can't wait for us to reach that together. But if you guys couldn't hear that intro, I apologize. As you can tell, it is not windy where I'm at right now. It was windy when I filmed this video yesterday. And so I apologize for the wind, but we're gonna have some awesome fish catches coming at the end of the video that hopefully won't be quite as windy. And if they will, we're gonna slap on a dope song to that thing and still be able to show you guys some great fish catches. But let's jump into the content. What the heck is the underspin? The underspin is technically a jig head. It falls into the jig head category because it is a usually lead head with a regular jig head style hook. But what makes it different is that it has a spinner underneath, thus calling it an underspin. So literally, if you just take the uh, the blade off the bottom, strip that thing off, it is just a standard swim bait jig head. But what makes it special is that spinner on the bottom, which I think gives it the ability to catch fish in other ways that swim baits on a jig head by themselves cannot. And so in the efforts of keeping this video relatively simple, I'm just gonna explain a few things about where I throw the underspin, why I decided to throw it over a regular swim bait. Of course, show you which two soft plastics I decide to thread on the back of this underspin. And then we'll stand up, show you guys how I retrieve it very, very quickly. It's a pretty dang easy technique. And then we're gonna go back on the water and show you guys tons of fish catches from yesterday's action with this exact underspin. So the first thing to understand about the underspin is that of course it is a shad imitation type lure. So you can technically throw it in whatever water water depth you want, but I found that an underspin, just with the, the, the way that it's built, usually they're a little bit heavier than a normal swim bait jig head. The blade adds to some of that weight. It's meant to be thrown in deeper water. So I'm not saying this is not for the pond, guys. You guys can throw it. I would recommend a lighter uh, jig head selection for your underspin if you're going to want to fish this from the bank at all. Uh, but I'd say this video is mainly meant for you guys in bass boats and kayaks that have access to finding where that offshore structure is and where those bait fish are because this thing is incredibly important to be fished around bait fish. I'm not saying you can't catch fish that are not feeding on bait fish, but this is just a bait fish imitation lure, and so you want to find those bait fish. I just said the word bait fish like 17 times. Now, picking the weight of your uh, jig head for your underspin is, of course, very important because you don't want to throw one that's too heavy, that you can't reel slow enough to keep it in the strike zone. So you really have to understand, one, what kind of cover you're fishing in and around. So if it's wood, you might want to keep it higher in the water column. If it's open water and rocks, you might be able to get away with a heavier jig head to get it down there faster and be able to retrieve it a little bit faster while still keeping it down in their strike zone. I've talked about, I think, in a swim bait or maybe a crankbait video before, uh, uh, yeah, the suspended fish video, why you have to understand where bass are sitting in the water column, and that is going to come into play as well with the underspin. It's literally just a swim bait that has a spinner on the bottom. Now, what makes this different than your standard flashy swimmer? The flashy swimmer is a Texas rig hook, usually a, a larger bend hook for a swim bait, like the, like the Raid Swimmer, like the, the, the Mag Draft, any sort of larger, you know, ribbed body paddle tail swim bait with a blade on the bottom. And so what, what's different between this one and that one is that that one is, is weedless. You can fish it in really shallow water and it's not really meant for deeper water situations. The underspin is kind of the polar opposite. It's not weedless usually, and it's meant for your deeper water situations. Now, when it comes to the soft plastics, you can rig on the back of the underspin. Of course, you can thread on your classic Raid Swimmer on the back, just like you're rigging it on the back of the Swim Bay Jig Head, because like I mentioned, it's the exact same thing, just with a little bit of flash on the bottom. But one thing that I found by fishing with a few guys, specifically Alton Jones and Alton Jones Jr. over the past few weeks, they both threw underspins, but they threw it with the original Fluke. Literally the original single piece of soft plastic, no slot in the middle for a wide gap hook. Just the original, almost like, I mean, you could basically throw like a white Cinco on the back. Just any sort of white soft plastic because they feel like by putting a swim bait on the back is adding a little bit too much vibration and presence in the water where if the fish are going to be feeding on a kind of more finessey bait fish style presentation and they want a little flash, all you need is that blade with some kind of soft plastic on the back. Uh, for some reason, they, and also if you look back at the Bassmaster Classic, I believe it was 2013 when Casey Ashley won on Lake Hartwell, he was throwing 
I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure he was throwing his underspin with a single fluke on the back. And so that's three pro anglers telling me they don't throw a swim bait on the back. They throw the single, I guess the, the single split tail fluke. You're gonna see me in this video catch plenty of fish on the swim bait, but if these pros really think that the fluke works best, that's definitely something to try yourself. So now that you all understand what the underspin is, what the two soft plastics that I use, uh, and of course the singular one that most pro fishermen use uh, to put on the back of it are, let's hop up real quick. I'll show you guys how to retrieve it, how the hook set works, because that is very important, and then show you guys plenty of fish catches. And don't forget, all this stuff, as always, is linked down in the product description below. That way you guys, uh, when you're ordering your tackle, please click through those links. It helps me out a ton. So I rigged up the underspin with the classic fluke on the back of it like that. It is just a very simple, um, kind of almost do nothing lure that you cast out there and you retrieve back in occasionally giving it a little bit of a pop. So let me show you what that looks like. So uh, the gear that I have it on is basically my spinnerbait setup and I'm gonna explain more about how similar this is to a spinnerbait here in a second. So I've got a uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon, a little bit overkill. I am fishing around some grass today. so. Uh, 12 pound is probably what I'd say for most of the open water situations, especially with the hook set that you're going to be using for this technique. Uh, I have any sort of gear ratio. What is this one right here? I've got a uh, six, eight to one works great. Really doesn't even matter. Uh, I would say nothing too fast because you want to be able to kind of crawl it down there. Anything in the six to sevens works for me. Uh, and then I have a seven, two medium TP one black speed stick. Uh, kind of my general longer casting spinnerbait rod. If I'm doing more target casting with a spinnerbait, I'll throw this to the 610 medium heavy, but a 7.2 medium is kind of my weightless fluke and underspin and longer spinnerbait rod. So I'm gonna make a cast out there. Of course, let it sink down to whatever depth I'm gonna let it sink down to. Uh, if you are curious about how to count down a lure, I talk about it in my suspended bass video and in my Alabama rig video. And so what you're gonna do, I'm gonna try to do it to the best of my ability, but it's kind of shallow at this pond here. So don't really have a whole lot of opportunities to do it, but you are basically just going to work it just like you do a spinnerbait. So if you wanna keep it lower in the water column, you're gonna reel with your rod tip down. If you wanna keep it maybe a little bit higher on your retrieve at the same speed, maybe you're worried about getting stuck in grass or on some wood that's down there. Maybe the rocks are really kind of grabby rocks on your hooks. You're gonna to wanna to keep the rod tip a little bit higher. But really, it is just a cast it out there. I'm gonna start retrieving right away so it doesn't get stuck. And you are just slowly reeling it in. I'd say every 10 to 15 turns of the handle, I'm gonna do a faster turn like that. That way it kind of gives that let, that blade a little bit faster of a turn than it had been doing in the retrieve. And oftentimes that is when those fish are going to bite. You just kind of have to imagine that a fish is, is sitting down there following it, kind of deciding whether or not it wants to eat it. And then all of a sudden it has a little bit of a jolt, a little bit faster, the blade turns, maybe the bait kind of moves sideways and it triggers that fish into biting. And like I said, you really want to keep the same retrieve all the way back to the boat and maybe even slow down a little bit closer you get to the boat. Now, if you are fishing this bait from the shore, like I mentioned, a lighter weight, this here is a half ounce, probably don't throw a half ounce because the, the grass here grows eight feet from the shore. And so it doesn't really give me a whole lot of opportunities to, uh, to reel it slower, closer to the bank. So maybe even speed it up the closer that you get to the bank. And when it comes to the hook set, it is exactly like a spinnerbait hook set. So you are not going to feel the bite, reel down and absolutely give them the business. That's totally unnecessary. And especially if you're fishing it on lighter line, that is not going to work out well for you uh, in getting a fish back in the boat. You're gonna break off because oftentimes these don't have super light hooks. This here is the Strike King one and it, it's got a pretty beefy hook. It's kind of got the same hook they use on their spinner baits. And so the hook set that I use for a spinner bait, if you guys have seen my videos on spinner baits before, is you're literally reeling you get the bite and you kind of reel into the fish like that. I, ca I call it a reel set. And especially on, um, oh, what the heck? Well, as I mentioned before, it is not a weedless lure. So maybe for your bank guys, this is not necessarily for you, especially this weight one. I'm currently stuck and I don't think I'm getting this back. But it's a spinnerbait hook set. Hopefully that made sense. But I think one more thing I forgot to talk about is that it's generally a clear water type lure. Uh, if you have anything less than two foot water visibility, so you stick your lure down, your rod tip, and it's it, you can't see two feet down, I would say probably don't throw an underspin. You can get away with it in dirty-ish water, kind of murky water, but if you've got dirty brown water, an underspin is not really the lure for you. So whether it's dirty ponds or dirty lakes or a dirty river, I would say an underspin is probably not the best. 
like I said, an underspin is a pretty finessey style of lure. Uh, and so it's not really my choice for uh, getting bass's attention in dirty water. I would stick to a crankbait or a chatterbait or something like that in dirty water. Uh, this is really a, a pretty dang gin clear water lure. So anything from, you know, three to 10 foot of water, even plus, that's when I pull out the underspin. So hopefully you guys enjoy this portion of the video and you learn something as always. We're gonna go on the water with Alton Jones Sr. and catch some dang fish on this thing. And we'll see y'all next time. Got him. <laughs> yes, there are. When your buddy catches one in the winter. Is that a smallmouth? Oh, for some reason. I get the assist on that. Yes. We're gonna give Alton, Alton the assist. You know what though? That's a that's actually a great tip though. Yeah. Is just uh, especially in the winter and in the summer whenever your buddy catches a fish yep. make sure and follow it up because exactly. they're usually not alone it's a bummer that you can't although you can throw a second rod in the water for a one penalty time, right one time per period okay no, oh without, oh really very cool there's one. Ooh. is it bigger is it a bigger one is it a bigger one a little bit a little bit nicer he knocked okay. slack in it. It was just like, oop, really? it's not there anymore. <laughs> Isn't that fun? That is a fun time. Come on. Beautiful fish right here on the underspin. Gorgeous. Probably the drop shot. Got him? Yep. I got him. Where is he at? There he is. Beautiful fish. I love the way clear water fish look. I do too. So, Alton Senior and I, double let me, hookup. Let me show you the difference between an underspin and a drop shot. <laughs> I'm telling you, the underspin usually, catches, usually, yes. Usually, well, it catches, I mean, a drop shot will catch quality too, but yeah, your yeah. average bite is just, yep. you got a better chance at one like that. We were throwing into the same school, and I caught this, and he caught that. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs>